If you told me a year ago that this series of videos would transform from me making my girlfriend play games to her asking me to let her play them, I'd probably think you were crazy. But here I am, telling you the story of how she set herself on the path of becoming a high-heeled cyborg ninja. It all started when my girlfriend approached me with a very simple request. She wanted to play the game where the dude punches the US Senate. probably start by mentioning that she had no clue what this world was or how it worked before going into this. Did we ever learn why they all have barcodes? All she knew was she was slicing people and having a good time. Ah! I don't even know if I'm doing it right, but this is so much fucking fun. With that being said, even with no prior knowledge, everyone who plays this game has that one moment at the beginning where they realize what they're signing up for. Culturally, this game is practically everywhere right now, and it speaks volumes that my girlfriend of all people was begging me to play it. There's a little cat! Hi! Look at how cute it is. Okay, back to my mission. Every day I wake up to a new rendition of Raiden getting punched by Armstrong, and it hasn't gotten old yet. It took one time showing my girlfriend Raiden throwing punches, and she was 100% committed to being in on the joke. Don't fuck with me, boy. Ow. In most games, she prefers a slower, heavier style of fighting. She's a lot more comfortable letting an enemy make the first move and then following up with a punish, especially when they're bigger than her. She figured out pretty quick in Metal Gear Rising, offense was her best defense. Aggression was the answer to most of her problems. Slide right into the propellers! Woo! Mega slices! I think I destroyed it. Perhaps the best illustration of this is how healing works in MGR. When slicing through an enemy, you have the opportunity to consume their spine as a full restore. This mechanic gave her a major incentive to keep fighting, even when her health was critical. Over the course of her playthrough, I watched some kind of beautiful metamorphosis, from the girlfriend who'd run and hide in the face of danger, to the one who frantically sliced through cyborgs hunting for another spine. <laughs> Yep. There are a few problems in this game that can't be solved with a couple of sword swings. Ironically, when she'd get stuck, it wasn't because of a tough enemy or difficult boss fight. More often than not, it was because there was a gate or door she didn't realize she could just slice through. I have to catch him. Um, what the hell am I supposed to do here? Oh my god, I just destroy shit that's in my way! <laughs> okay, that's one way to do it! Metal Gear Rising is a fast-paced game. All the different systems and mechanics weave together and flow really smoothly, but when you're figuring them out the first time, it becomes a clunky mess. I probably will die, honestly. What I mean by that is watching her play the game was an exercise in patience. For starters, this is a new type of game for her, and understandably, it took her some time to get a feel for how to play. On the one hand, it's extremely fun watching her turn everything she comes across into mincemeat. On the other hand, it's infuriating watching her swing wildly in blade mode for a solid 30 seconds without ever realizing she hadn't hit a damn thing. I feel like, I don't know what this means, but I feel like this one's almost dead, you know? I don't know if it's worth mentioning, but I started noticing every time she went into blade mode, an overwhelming majority of swings were horizontal. I don't know if she just favored her light attack or what the deal was, but she clearly had a favorite button to press. When I asked her about it, she didn't have a clue what I was talking about, so it seems like the only explanation we can come up with is that going into blade mode and landing hits feels so good, it gives her an out-of-body experience. Ooh! That's for my eye, bitch! <laughs> Okay. Aside from being a fast game, it's also an incredibly loud one. I'm protecting humanity! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Oh! I'm not complaining. This game introduced Zandatsu into her vocabulary. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. <gasps> If it's 
not her screaming at the top of her lungs while running down a building towards a giant robot, then it's the constant cries from her companions yelling, Raiden! A dozen times every time she planks. What the hell? This can't be happening. Raiden? Raiden! I usually go into the living room when she's playing a game and I need to get work done, but for MGR, I had to go up on our roof. After our first day of playing, we agreed maybe this wasn't the best before bed game since she was pumped with more energy than if she drank four cups of coffee. <laughs> Navigating the world is made much easier for her in this one thanks to Raiden's ninja run. Like a true gentleman, he does all the jumping and platforming for her, so all she has to do is hold down the right trigger and watch the fireworks fly. It was especially heartwarming to see her reaction to it for the first time. I never engaged much with the stealth mechanics myself in MGR. It seemed like something they wanted me to do, but I just found it more fun to brute force my way through everything instead. My girlfriend surprised me though. When she found an area with enemies she wasn't particularly fond of, namely those gorilla looking ones, she'd pull out her box and see what kind of mischief she could get into. Shit. How did he not see me? As much as she loved sneaking past everything, a guilty pleasure of hers was hearing the little alert sound that would play when she'd get caught. She was stuck between her two desires, one to be sneaky and the other to hear the exclamation sound. In any case, she used the box way more than I ever did. Ah! Of all the things she could have struggled with, I was most surprised by the QTEs. The quick time events, or quick scenes as she's been calling them since Resident Evil 4, are usually a nice opportunity to deal a big chunk of damage to a boss. I'd be on the edge of my seat watching her boss fights and practically fall out of my chair when she'd blow it in the cutscenes. <laughs> Oh my god! Fuck, that was blade mode! I was watching the cutscene! As fast of a game as MGR is, it actually gives you a pretty big window to input the button prompts. But for her, when her heart's pumping and the music picks up vocals out of nowhere, she just instinctually was pressing buttons as soon as she saw prompts. Whoops. It may have added a few more continues to her playthrough, but she figured it out in the end. Wait, what? This can't be happening! Oh my god, I thought I was supposed to cut it into pieces. One thing I knew she'd have something to say about before going into this was the codec calls. It didn't take her long to point out that she constantly was getting Zoom calls from her support crew. It was pretty funny watching her hang up, complain about it, before walking forward seven paces and receiving another call. This is Boris. Weren't we Give just calling, step. like, out Looks there? Clear. I also loved her reaction the first time she sliced a boss into ribbons and then had one final conversation with them, even though they were in little pieces on the floor in front of her. Of all the boss fights in the game, it's safe to say the fight with Monsoon gave her the most trouble. Really, all it came down to was parrying. And if Blade Wolf is the keep dying until you get good at parrying boss, then Monsoon is the how on earth did you make it this far without learning to parry boss. Oh my god. I don't think there's anything I can do if I get caught in that. It wasn't so much she couldn't parry as she was being too aggressive and greedy with her hits. On one attempt, she got so incredibly close and then that's when I realized she was missing something. Nano paste. Oh shit, it just heals me? That's awesome! Co figure, being able to extend your health bar up to five times in a tough boss fight really makes a big difference. Woo! More nano paste! Calling the cast of MGR quirky wouldn't do it justice. These characters are absolutely bonkers every time they're on screen. It seems only natural she started playing favorites. As she's notoriously bad with names, a lot of these characters got funny monikers like Mr. Magnets and the Sundance Kidnapper. Also, for whatever reason, she kept calling the senator president. The president. Even though they say at least half a dozen times that we're trying to protect the president from the senator. <laughs> but the president was saved. Either way, no matter how good of an omelet chef you are, you can't beat the sexy samurai and the robo doggo. The hips on Sam! Holy shit! Me like! As has become tradition with this sort of thing, we sat down and tried to piece together the story from the Metal Gear series. What the fuck was that guy? You really forget how convoluted and crazy the timeline of these games are until you're sitting across from someone that keeps asking if the dates I'm talking about are when the games take place or when they came out. Since what? And despite not having a very firm understanding of Metal Gear Rising's world, she had an incredibly strong grasp of all the memes. Memes. The DNA of the soul. 
She's been exposed to several of the gems this title has to offer, whether she realized it or not. It was always pretty satisfying knowing a familiar scene was coming up and I was gonna get a reaction. Making the mother of all omelets here, Jack. Can't fret over every egg. Not when you're purging the leaf, right? The final boss fight was what I was most anticipating from her playthrough. It's one thing to laugh at the hilarity that is the fight with the senator, but playing it for yourself is a whole other experience. What a douche. Oh my god. <laughs> Says the guy in a giant fucking robot. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> I just fucked his robot! <laughs> so this is just our sword now, okay. <gasps> Wait, no! With his sword! This is awesome! We're fucking badass! Oh no. This is the part I've been waiting for. <coughs> Slippery little bastard! Let's go! <laughs> I'm nervous! <laughs> If he was that strong, why did he need the robot? Oh fuck. Yeah, I didn't think that was gonna work. Uh oh. Nice, nice. Hey! Do you know how many points I spent on that? Oh, ow. Maybe I was wrong about you. Oh my god, he looks so proud. You're batshit insane! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the betrayal! Oh my god, is this the part? Oh my god! Oh, it's the part! Oh! <gasps> 
Rest assured, you did it. You beat the ever-loving shit out of a United States Senator. Oh my god, that was so fucking fun!